So this is going to be a short video just going over everything we learned from our second workshop. Um, so first I'm going to go into the event sheet. Um, that's all hooked in properly. Excellent. Okay. So first thing we do is we go to layers uh, and we notice right now we only have one layer, which means if we try and put a background image in there, uh, everything's going to get pretty messy. So we're going to add a layer, uh, which by default goes on top. Uh, what we'll do is we'll move it to the bottom, we'll click the little pencil to rename it, we'll call it background. There we go. Um, on layer zero, we'll change transparent to yes. And then on our new one, we'll change transparent to no. Excellent. Okay, so now with the background selected, um, to make sure we've done it right, we can uh, uncheck this check mark on the top layer and we'll see everything disappears when we uncheck it. On the background, we'll insert a new object. It's going to be a tiled background and we'll just call it background. Insert. Click here. We're going to open up the file from our lesson two folder. So, um, you should have a lesson two folder. You can download it from one of the emails we sent if you don't have it. Tiled backgrounds. Uh, and there's a whole bunch to choose from. I'm going to go for the nice green one. It's excellent. Looks good. Drag that here. And then the nice thing, because it's a tiled background, we can just stretch it and it'll just repeat itself again and again and again. Brilliant. Um, my level is pretty wide. To make it wide, what you do is you just click on this gray area once. Um, then on the side, you'll see layout size. So if I make it just 280, my level is really skinny. If I make it 2080, it gets pretty big. Um, so that's good. You'll notice if I run this right now, It works, but the bottom half of the screen is white and it looks sort of ugly. So we're going to go back here. And if we select background again, we'll see the background color set to be white. We'll go to other. And this eyedropper tool lets us choose a color by clicking on the screen. So we could choose an orange or a blue. Uh, but I'm going to ask for this sort of green. Oh, maybe a little darker. There we go. And then if I drag this up a bit, that blue we're seeing is the sky repeating again because it repeats in both directions. So if I just pull that up a little higher, there we go. Now if I run it, it looks a little prettier. Brilliant. So that's the background done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my blue blob with a um, with the character. So where it says animated frames one, it currently has this blue square, we're gonna right click and import frames. Um, and we want multiple frames. So then we go back to lesson two, we select character and we choose walk. And then you select all of these. So you can drag over or you can press control A on your keyboard, open. Um, now if we run this animation, what will happen is we'll have blue square and then it'll animate through these. We don't want our blue square anymore, so I'll delete that one. Excellent. Um, you can right click and preview to make sure it worked all right. There he goes. Brilliant. So we'll close this. Now if we run it, we'll see he's animated, but um, he only runs once and then he stops animating. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an event to the player and under animations we're going to say um, when any animation is finished we're going to add an action, player, animation and we're going to start the animation from the beginning. So whenever it's finished we're going to start it again. Um, Okay. The other thing you would notice is if we ran left, um, our guy still faces right. 
So we'll jump back to here, add another event, player, um, sorry, not player, system. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the player's uh, x vector. And remember, the vector is speed, but with a direction. So we're going to compare two values. Um, whenever we want to compare two things, compare two values, we come to system. The first value is my player. And then you tap uh, just the period or dot to get your more options. Uh, and then there'll be a whole bunch. Uh, vector uh, X is under platform, so we choose platform. Then we do dot again. And vector X, there we go. So what we want to do is if it's less than zero, uh, so it's a negative number, that means he's heading left. So if our player's heading left, we're going to want to set him to be mirrored. Excellent. So now what happens if we run this is when we push left, he'll run left. Uh, but when we push right, we haven't told it to flip back yet. So I'm going to select this whole row, copy it and paste it. And then now I'm going to double click on the less than zero to edit that. And we're going to make it if it's greater than zero. So if he's heading right, then instead of saying it to mirrored, we're going to set it to not mirrored. So I'll run that. Yeah. So now he runs right and left, depending on which way he should be facing. Uh, I'm going to go back to my game. My bad guys run very quickly. Uh, they're actually too quick for me. I'm going to delete one of them, so I only have this guy. And I'm going to set his max speed to 130. There we go. Make it a little more manageable. Um, here's my jump through platform. So I'm going to replace the texture on that. I go to open. Look in lesson two. I have all these decoration options. So I can make it a crate. I can make it, uh, I could even make them clouds if I wanted. I might do that. That sounds nice. There we go. Uh, and these blocks, I can't really see them because they're on green. Alpha is uh, invisibility, so I'm going to set that back to full strength. There we go. So now if I run it, do, do, do. There we go. Uh, now one of the things that you may run into as an issue is uh, we had that problem with the player's body going through the ground and that was because of hitboxes or the uh, collision polygon as it calls it. So basically what happens is when you upload an image sometimes it tries to guess where the hitbox should be and this is what the game uses for the, the physics. So we can right click and set to bounding box. And that basically means um, it's going to behave the same as if this was a giant square character. So his feet are down here and everything like that. So that's the way it was and the way we want it. Now for the clouds, um, I'm going to set to bounding box first. But then I'm going to bring it down a bit like this. So before you would have noticed that I stood on top of the clouds, but it looks sort of weird. So instead I'm going to bring these points right down. And basically this blue rectangle is the area that's solid. Um, so now if we run it, I think it'll look a lot cooler. Still going. There we go. There we go, much better. Hi. There we go. Um, here's the, um, the code for the prize in case you're missing that on yours. We just, when the player collides with the trophy, we want to, it's a system action and it's called go to layer. And the layer we want them to go to is the, uh, oh, sorry, go to layout. And the layout we want them to go to is game over. And then on my game over screen, I have, uh, 
similar code where when the button's clicked, we go to layout one. So if you want to do a level two, you could make it when you hit the prize, you go to layout two or level two. Uh, and then when you're done level two, you could make them go to the game over screen. Um, that's, that's most of what we covered. Uh, for the bad guy, you can do a similar, you can import frames. Uh, when doing an animation, you can also import a sprite strip. So that means instead of three separate images, it's one image all together. So i choose this nice orange bad guy. I have three horizontal cells in this picture and one vertical cell. So now I know how to cut up the image. I get rid of that first one. Close all this. And then on the event sheet, we want to add an event for the bad guy. When any animation is finished, we want the bad guy to start his animation from the beginning. Excellent. Um, the one other thing I'll point out is we did write a little bit of code the other time where uh, we stopped the player's animation if their speed is uh, equal to zero. So to do that, I can copy and paste one of these. And it's going to say um, player on stopped. So this event will get called when the player stops moving. And we want to stop their animation. And then um, copy and paste, just I find it a little easier. Uh, but I'm going to replace this one with if the player started moving so on moved then we want to start the animation uh, from current frame is fine done so now let's see how this goes loading 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 So unfortunately my computer's going a little slow right now. Um, let me just try republishing that. Ooh. Yeah, so my computer's getting a little too slow right now. Um, to do. I'm just opening the one from the actual workshop just to check and see how we did the animation there. This is not the right one. Yeah, so uh, when they're moving, we set the animation to run and play it from the beginning instead of start. Um, yeah, so that was it. Uh, I didn't name our animations today, so they're actually called default. But if you go to your layout and double click on your player, there'll be the option for the animation. And you can uh, rename it to something like run. And then in your code, what you'll want to do is set it so that um, when the player is moving, set the animation to run and play from beginning. And that's it. Okay, good luck.